Hi, my name is Anna Tyder. I am an award-winning journalist, author, and podcaster. I graduated with MBA uh, from Webster University in 1999. And currently, I'm also teaching at Webster University. I teach uh, the t Department for Strategic Communications. I actually graduated with a bachelor degree uh, at Webster University, and I studied marketing management. And I loved it so much that I decided I wanted to stay at Webster University and I wanted to continue pursuing my business education. I loved Webster's for a few reasons. One of it is it was so international. I love that. I, all my students came from, or all my students, all my classmates came from different countries. Um, my professors came from different countries, backgrounds, cultures. And also what I found fantastic was that in contrary what, to what was being taught at the Austrian University, what we received at Webster University was very, very hands-on. We really received practical tools, not only knowledge and uh, all the information and knowledge that was important for us, but also practical tools that prepared us for the future, for the world and for the professional environment. So I moved directly from my bachelor's to my MBA because I already started working. I had some work experience. I worked at the Croatian Mission to United Nations. Um, and also back then, but even I think still in Europe, this is what we do. <laughs> when we go through higher education, we just finish all of it in one go. We were not used back then to the separation between BAs and MBAs and master or masters. Um, university was university, and I have to blame my parents a little bit for this as well, or not blame it turned out well. But they said, since you're at the university, just continue and finish everything. Um, but it turned out fantastic. You know, I really love this question and I'm very excited about this question. And I can I bother you with three? <laughs> because I was thinking of the one professor or one course and then three came to my mind that I'd really like to share. So one was Edward Moskog, who back then taught, I think, strategic, some kind of strategies, some kind of a business strategy. And there were two, um, two amazing things with, with Mr. Mosca. One was that he made us do case studies with existing Austrian companies. So we really created, we really worked with companies, with people in the field, and we created business uh, case studies for them. And that was an amazing opportunity to, to learn and grow and gave us this feeling that we know we really know it's not just theory, we are doing the practice. So that was fantastic. And the other thing is when Mr. Mosca was teaching uh, strategy, I remember my su surprise and my lights going on when he said, doing nothing can also be part of your strategy. Never forget, never forget that you can decide to do nothing. Do nothing is also a strategic thinking. And I have to say this served me so many times in life, not only in my professional life, but also in my private life. It's one of the best lessons in life generally I've ever received. So this this shout out goes to Mr. Mosca. Uh, second shout out goes to uh, Charles Randolph. Charles Randolph um, back then was teaching uh, public relations and advertising. In the meantime, he moved on to, to screenwriting and a few years ago he won an Oscar. Um, and uh, these, he taught us some very, very valuable things that I still applied once, especially once I started, uh, took off and um, started freelancing or being my own business about public relations and, and advertising. And the third shout out goes to Mr. Alan Levy who was back then the editor of uh, Prague Post. 
He was a book author, he was a journalist, a, a playwright, a, an amazingly successful and accomplished gentleman. Um, he was teaching uh, journalism and PR and he was the one who recognized way before I did or anybody else that there's a writing talent in me. <laughs> he loved everything I wrote and, and he was really... Yeah, he recognized what, what, what was to become a, a career in writing later on and it took me almost 10 years to to digest everything he told me and to accept that this is really, this is it. What was amazing with my MBA back then is, this was 1999 when an MBA in Europe was quite exotic. Um, it was definitely a stamp of approval and a stamp of quality. Um, so graduating with an MBA uh, opened many doors for me in Austria. The first, my first job was already fantastic. Looking back, you know, you take things for granted when you're young, but looking back, it's like, wow, did this really happen to me? My first job uh, was at the, at Austria's and later on region's biggest uh, mobile phone network. And uh, I was immediately, because of my MBA, I was immediately put in uh, very strategic areas, which also turned out to be my forte later. And my MBA helped me to continue and pursue this, this strategic thinking and strategic planning, strategic management. Um, it was great to see, I'm again, um, comparing myself to people from Austria who came from the Austrian university who were taught very academically and very theoretically and I walked in and I already knew things you know it was amazing to walk into this corporate world and to feel I've learned this I know this this is not foreign to me I'm, I'm equipped to deal with this and that was that was great Here's a little private story. I come from a family of artists, very successful, award-winning, two amazing, amazing artists, but artists deep in their soul who studied art. <laughs> and um, comparing my, well, I dived into this creative world later on, after my 10 years in corporate and diplomacy and advertising, um, when I decided, hmm, Mr. Levy was right. I'm actually a writer. Um, but but then it was interesting comparing how I went, how I dealt with it and how my parents dealt with it. And I was very, very grateful that I had this education and the experience I did because I became my one man, one, one man show, one woman show, you know, I, I was able to be my own manager, to be my own publicist, to be my own advertiser, um, bookkeeper, <laughs> you know, I was, I was prepared and ready to, to um, approach my creative life uh, uh, with this background in, in business, which was very, very useful. Well, after 25 years or even more, I was preparing for this and I'm like, no, it's been, I think, 27 years. I started working when I was 21, so 28 years of professional experience, which, as I mentioned, was very, very different. I moved from, from one thing to the other and experienced, again, I'm repeating, diplomacy and corporate marketing and strategy and then advertising and then I wrote books I was a journalist, uh, a podcaster. Um, it, it, at one point, I realized how much I've learned and what an incredible wealth of tools and learnings uh, and experiences and knowledge I have. And I really wanted to pass this on. I, I, I felt like I really have a treasure chest now that I can pass on to a new generation. And what would be a better place than Webster's? Because I'm repeating, I'm going back to the beginning of our conversation where I really felt like my teachers gave me very useful 
knowledge and very useful tools and very useful um, uh, uh, um, experiences that really prepared me for the world out there and this is what i wanted to do i didn't want to go and teach something extremely theoretical and academic i really when i walk into the classroom i'm thinking primarily what my students will really get something out of for their for their academic lives but later on for their professional lives I don't know much I have to tell you about this, but from what I'm witnessing is, and this goes, I think, for everything young people are experiencing now that's different from, from uh, what we did, there's so much more of everything out there. <laughs> um, and now I'm closing the circle again and coming back to the beginning of our conversation. When I graduated with my MBA, that was something very exotic and special. Nowadays, there are a lot of MBAs out there. Um, the, the, the competition is global and big and strong. This is why it's so important to invest into, into good education, into something that has a good reputation, but also really gives you skills that will make you and teach you how to stand out from the crowd. You know, my problem is I have spent more than 10 years in the United States, so I wasn't, I wasn't here. But I, I am part of the whole alumni com uh, community. And if you live at Webster's, it's fantastic because they constantly invite you to different symposiums and workshops and drinks. And you really, once you graduated, you really stay part of this beautiful, international, ambitious, interesting community. Um, if you don't stay in Vienna, nowadays with, with the technology, you can still, still kind of be in touch, but uh, they are very, very active. I love being Webster alumni. Webster University Vienna, the size is fantastic. It is not too big and it is not too small. You get decent sized classrooms where it's not five of you. Sometimes it, there are 30 students um, and big enough to really learn from others and create this good um, energy and, and group, group work. But the classes are small enough for the, for the professor to really pay attention to every single student um, and work with students. And this is something that's extremely valuable. I really appreciated that at Webster University.